Hi everyone and welcome to Mallorca. Well today I'm near Palata de España in the centre of Palma. It's one of the busy hubs in the city as all the buses and trains have their stations here. So it's a great starting point if you fancy getting out of town and using the public transport to explore the island. And today I'm going to take the vintage train which leaves from the station behind me from Palma up to Soler on the west coast of the island. The narrow gauge railway has connected Palma with the small town of Sola since 1912 and this is the only one of its kind in the world. The 27 kilometre route takes about an hour as it makes its way through the countryside and groves. The train runs between both Palma and Sola throughout the day all year round and ticket prices are 17 euros return or 10 euros one way as of June 2010. Once you arrive in Sola, most of the activity centres around the town's shaded square just below the train station. Here you can enjoy lunch at one of the cafes with the town's modernist and baroque architecture as the backdrop. However, many of the best restaurants are found at the edge of town, at the port or in the neighbouring countryside and villages. There's also a number of old cobbled streets and many little boutiques to explore for a few hours. The shops really are quite good here. And it's worth remembering that the main market day is on Saturday, when much of the town is cordoned off to cars and even the shops set up stalls outside. If you're thinking of staying here, it's a great base for walking and hiking. There's also a number of delightful boutique hotels and thinkers in the area. But check out our listing pages as there's too many for me to mention now. And then there's the village of Fornaluch. It also offers several great options. It's just up the valley and it's been voted the prettiest village in Spain. From Sola, there's a tram that runs down to the seaside resort of Port de Sola, and it costs four euros one way. The port has a long history of exporting Mallorcan goods, mainly citrus fruits from the nearby valleys to the mainland Europe. Although a little more developed than the main town, Port de Sola has a relaxed atmosphere and is more tastefully built than the resorts in other parts of the island. The bay itself is especially pretty and is enclosed by a fortified harbour wall that's home to the naval base, testament to the less tranquil times when the port was frequently attacked by pirates. The waterfront promenade offers a selection of tourist goods, but we recommend taking a walk up to the lighthouse and the old naval museum on the northeast promontory. Now the main beach in the town is popular by its location, but it's nothing special. Your far better option is the sandy beach on the western side of the bay, or you can explore the area by sea with one of the several water-based activities available here. The port is home to numerous restaurants well known for their fish, though the top billing goes to the S Faro, which is some way out of town on the western edge. And Port de Soleil offers several interesting hotels, but our picks include the Amia, which has been refurbished for a contemporary feel, the Trendy Hotel Esplendida, and the charming S Port, which shouldn't be overlooked on a shortlist. Nevertheless, Port de Soleil will soon be home to the super deluxe Jumeirah Hotel, due for completion this year. Now this stands to be the finest hotel in all of Europe, boasting seven stars so we'll be interested to see how this changes the profile of the resort in years to come. Now of course Soleil isn't the only town on the west coast of the island, and if you'd like to check out more, we recommend taking the coastal road for breathtaking scenery and charming little villages. I'll be back in weeks to come with a further report on the west coast. But that's all for now. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you here next week on seemiorca.com.